Okay, this is a quick talk through on how to create an HTML page and we're going to use Notepad for this because most people have Notepad on their computers. If you're using a Mac or a Linux computer, the chances are what you've got is text edit, but it works in pretty much the same way. So I'm going to go down onto here and I'm going to find Notepad. Okay, and I'm going to go to File and I'm going to go to Save As. And the first page in any website should be called index.html. But before I can actually create that page, I need to have a folder to put it into. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use my document space for now. And in my document space, I'm going to create a new folder. And it needs to have a logical name. So I'm going to call this something like James website. You'll notice I'm not putting any spaces in and that's on purpose because eventually I want this to be a folder on my actual website. I'm making the W into a capital W, and this is called Camelback. So basically, I've got a capital J and a capital W, so any text reader will recognize the difference. Um, and then I'm just going to click off that and click into it. And then this is going to be called, which is the name of the file, index.html. So it's saving as an HTML file, and I'll click on Save. Now, I'll just pull this to one side for a second and go into my documents folder. You'll see within the documents folder here, we've now got this James website. If I double click on it, you'll see the index file now appears as an HTML file. If I double click to open that, it will open as a website. So I need to watch for that because obviously that's great for previewing it, but it's not very good for editing it. If I want to edit it, I either need to right click, go open with, and find Notepad. Now, if it's not showing there, I can go and choose another app. Or the alternative, if I just close Notepad for a second and reopen it, is to go File, Open, go into my Documents, go back into the James website. Now, you'll see there's no document there, and that's because it's looking for a text file. And we need to tell it we need to look for all files and then we can open the index file up like this. Now, once we've done this, we need to set some basic HTML bits up. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say that this is a doc type. And the doc type it's going to be is an HTML one. And you'll see I'm putting tags around this. So I'm using a tag to start it and end each bit. We're saying that the HTML starts here, so we probably should also say that the HTML ends here. And you'll see that slash before the um, HTML means that we're ending that tag. The start of the HTML, we're going to have a header. And again, I'm going to close that header. And after the header, we're going to have the body. Now, this is where most of your website will actually be. And we're going to close the body. Now, if there are blank lines, like you can see I've left a few there, it doesn't matter because the um, the computer will just ignore them as it would in Python or anything else, unless it's specifically told to look at them. Now, within the header, we're going to add a few bits here. So the first thing we're going to do is create a title. Now, it's up to you what you want to create as a title for your website. This is the bit that shows at the top in this kind of space here. Okay, so it probably should match it. So I'm going to call this Mr. Dyson's test site, which is a little bit long. Okay, then I'm going to add something which is called the uh, meta char set. Now, this is basically just the character set that we're going to use. Um, and the character set we're going to use for this one is going to be equal to UTF8. Like that. Now again, most of the time it won't matter, but there are different character sets available and that tells the browser which one to look for. We're also going to add an extra bit here. Now we're not going to use this right away, but what we're doing here is we're creating a link, um, which we're later on going to use to add some uh, a CSS, a cascading style sheet in, which will allow us to format the page somewhat better. So I'm going to say link is relative to style sheet. Now watch your spellings on this because it wouldn't be the first time that I've made a mistake here. The type is going to be a text document and it's going to be CSS, so cascading style sheet. And the href is where is it? So what's the uh, location of it? Well, we're going to call it 
main.css and we're going to put it in the same folder along with everything else. Now within the body, we can start to create our page. Now, when we're adding content in, we basically have different sizes. So this is the biggest size of title. Okay, and they keep going down. So an H2 will be slightly smaller. And an H3 will be slightly smaller still. And this carries on all the way down to an H6, which is the smallest of the headings. But we also have paragraph text, so we can do a P. And this is what we use when we are adding normal writing. Okay. Now if we press save on that, We'll go back into our folder and click on this index page. We should see it now. It says Mr. Dyson's test site here. And you see biggest size, slightly smaller size, a little bit smaller. And if I'd added the others in, there'd be some smaller and smaller. And then we get the paragraph bit here. Now we can make those different sizes using the CSS later. But that gives you a basic format to start with and should allow you to add some content into the site. Now, once you've got the basic bits of content in, you're going to want to do some bits like add in links and so on. So one of the ways that we can do this is if I go to a site like this one, so this is a site I was working on earlier, and I go back into my notepad, which is fine where I've put that, there we go. Then within the writing here, we could add that. So I have been working on my learning to learn website the link for this is now if we're going to add a link in what we want to do is this so we do and you see i'm doing this within the text now just makes it a bit bigger so you can see a bit better a href okay and again we need to put the location in on this one so it's going to be a href equals uh in fact i copied it so just control v okay so https colon forward slash forward slash the location of the address. Now, what we want to do now is we want to close those speech marks and we want to close that tag. And then we want to put the writing in here. So the link for this is, I could just write something like L2L, okay? And then I can close that tag, which this one is an A, because it's an A referenced. Um, and there we're ending the A as well. And interestingly, if you go on to um, set up a website using a domain, they also refer to this as an A domain. So we're going to click on File. We're going to click on Save. We're going to go back onto our website again. I'm going to press Refresh. And you should see now the only bit it shows is the L2L because that is the bit that was kind of surrounded by the link here. But when we click on it, it will now take us to that page. Okay, so we've now already got a working page, although we haven't put it onto a website yet or anything like that. Okay, okay another nice easy thing we can do straight away is we can start to add, if I just make it a bit smaller for a second, is we can start to add in things like images. Now, ideally what you should be doing is using images that you are your own but if you're not using images that you're own you should certainly be using images that have got permissions if i go on somewhere like google and i look for um let's look for a, a standard image to do with teaching we're going to the images section and on the tools option here we can go to usage rights and we can go to labeled for reuse. Okay, so these are images we've got permission to use. And if I do the same thing here, if I go to bing.com, okay, and I look for teaching. And again, it's in a different position on here, but it's the same thing. So if I go to images, okay, and at this time it's on the right hand side here. Let's get rid of that site info. Okay, and we go to filter. 
And again on here, if I go to license, I should be able to go to all creative commons here. So in both cases, finding images that is fine for us to use. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna find an image. Now, at this point, we've got two choices. We can actually link directly to this image within our site, or we can download this image onto our uh, folder and then link it. Now I'm gonna download images, but I'm not gonna download videos, okay? So just click on this one, I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna save the image as. Now it's really important that this goes into the same folder that everything else goes in. So it's going to go to Jane's website, and that's not a very useful name, so I'm gonna call it teaching, and I'm gonna press save. Now, if I look in here, you can see this teaching um, file just downloaded. It's a JPEG file. So what we can do is here, after the paragraph, we can start to add in an image. And we're gonna say the source is equal to, and you'll see there, I called it teaching. So I'm gonna call it teaching.jpg. And I'm gonna specify the width. And I'm going to say the width is 50%. I'm not going to specify the height because I've set the width as a percentage, which means the height will just match it. If I set both, it will go quite strange. So I'm going to press File, I'm going to press Save. I'm going to double click on my link to reopen it so I can see it. And you'll see here that my image is now inserted. If I click on the corner of here, you'll see as I shrink this page, you can the image will now resize because we said it's 50% of the screen. So as soon as the screen gets big, the image gets big. As soon as the uh, screen gets small, the image gets small. And that's quite important, particularly if people are gonna be looking at this on other screens, uh, and it should allow us to do other bits with that. A couple of other bits I can do there. Obviously, I can add additional images in. I can also add things like BR. Now, BR is a break. You're not gonna see much of a use of it there, but if I put it between like two bits of text here, okay and I save that. So you see that went between biggest and slightly smaller. So we've got a gap there. If we refresh that one now, the gap grows. Not necessarily great in that circumstance. I can also use something which is HR, which is a horizontal line. So if I put in that, I press File and press Save, you'll see I now get a horizontal line in there, so I can kind of start to split my page up a little bit. And we're starting to see the beginnings of a, of a reasonable page starting to develop now. Okay, one of the things I haven't done here yet is add in any colors or any formatting uh, to do with that. And that is because we're gonna do that in the cascading style sheet and I'll come back to that in a minute on a second video. Okay, but for now, the key things to remember, we've started to format a page, we started to insert some bits and we're putting it all into this same folder so we can come back to it later.